So by uh, February, March, we came up with a new strategy. This strategy is called DITIS, which stands for Digital Technology for Education Sector Transformation. This DITIS is now taken as a standard uh, strategy for transforming the education sector in terms of intervention, in terms of usage of digital technologies. technologies. And this uh, strategy has six pillars. The first pillar is use of technology to, for online assessment. Online assessment is not only exam, but also from very from pre-primary up to 12th grade students will have to be able to use technology to assess the intellect, the skill, the, the level of uh, understanding of our students. Pillar number two is meant to improve the quality of teachers' education online. In this country, we have more than 700,000 uh, teachers. And in our new strategy, the capacity of our teachers should be improved from time to time. In terms of education and also in terms of uh, certification and uh, assessment requirements. So uh, that means that all 700,000 teachers will be on some level of uh, short-term or mid-term or long-term training. And uh, physically it's impossible to bring all these teachers into universities and colleges. So uh, we, we, we are in the process of leveraging technologies so that our teachers, wherever they are, wherever they live, be able to have this online education, online short-term, long-term, uh, education and also online assessment. That's number two. Pillar number three is all about data analytics. So with 26, 27 million students, 700,000 teachers and uh, 46,000 schools. So the way we are uh, capturing data, collecting data and anal uh, making analytics of our data is still very traditional. So we want to make both data capturing and data analytics and data display and availability of data from a single source and this is going to be handled through one of these initiatives as pillar number three. Pillar number four is making our secondary schools digital intensive. Digital intensive secondary schools is meant to improve the quality of education for our students attending the secondary schools. So by making digital intensive secondary schools, surely in a couple of years to come, then we expect very intelligent students to be, their intelligence to be displayed and to be known all over, all over the country. That's number four. Number five is meant for uh, digital ID. So if we are not digitally identifying our students and our, and our teachers, all those initiatives, initiative number one, two, three, four, is not, is not able, we, we may not be able to achieve those goals. That means that each student and each teacher should be digitally identified. It's then and it's only then that we are able to uniquely identify somebody and, uniquely, and be able to analyze what type of student, what type of teachers we have, the pro and we are able to, and which will help us identify the level of intellect, the level of performance, and the profile of all, all our academic uh, staffs and also our students. So this digital ID is to be integrated with, with the performance analytics software that we are developing in ours, and this will help us to, to really make the analytics as perfect as possible. Number six is all about connectivity. So uh, for me, interconnection of these 3,800 secondary schools is something the government has to invest on. So internet connectivity is like this. If we interconnect 3,800 secondary schools, it shouldn't be commercialized. It shouldn't be driven by uh, telecom commercialization and, and something similar. It should be freely available. Our students and our teachers should be able to Assess, uh, access the uh, contents, be able to the teacher's education and the student's education should be online driven. So the internet connectivity should be either fully free or highly subsidized by government. So with other stakeholders like Minister of Health, Minister of Innovation, Minister of Agriculture, also we are working, also with, with World Bank as well, and the Minister of Finance, we are working on the possibility of interconnecting all our secondary schools with a very high broadband connectivity of a minimum of 300 megabits per second. So that once we have that highway, expressway, internet expressway uh, into our secondary schools, then uh, the biggest benefit for the country is the education platform, the uh, assessment platform, the everything that is going to run 
on this expressway. And education is the single sector on which government, we government has to invest on uh, because of its implication in, in the future of our generation. Mm -hmm. uh, if uh, the education quality deteriorates or if, if the education quality is not improved, then it, it, it implies it, it has a direct connection into whether it's the health sector or the agriculture sector or the construction infrastructure sector or all sectors, even political and social and economic activities would be improved or not. So education the single sector that determines uh, how we want to shape this great country of ours. This initiative itself is so huge and it's not something that we would be accomplishing in a very short period of time. So it's something that's continu continuously, uh, that's something to be done continuously for the coming couple of years. And as we go by uh, all those uh, implementation years, I'm sure the budget issue can also be easily solved, either by government budget line or by our partners in education. But as we speak now, everybody is very much aware of our detailed uh, plan, detailed strategy and the uh, very big objectives that we wanted to achieve in bringing digital technology into the education sector. And everybody uh, within the government setup and outside the government setup are very much aware of our uh, strategy, especially in terms of improving the quality of education. Everybody is very much convinced that if uh, quality of education in this great country of ours is to be improved, then it should be and only be through intervention of technologies.